We live in a time of judgment. We're not talking about flawed human judgment. We're talking about the perfect judgment that comes from the heavenly kingdom in Jesus' hands. Jesus spoke of this judgment in his great prophecy about the last days found in Matthew chapters 24 and 25. After outlining what we could expect to see, he provided three parables that deal with final judgment. In Matthew chapter 25, the first two parables relate to the final sealing of genuine anointed ones. These parables will be fulfilled not long before the great tribulation begins. Next, in the third parable, Jesus gives attention to the rest of mankind. Let's read the opening four verses of what he said, starting in verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit down on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who have been blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the founding of the world. Inherit the kingdom. In other words, paradise, the earthly realm of the kingdom. When is this fulfilled? After Jesus comes in his glory, he said, and judges those then living. Jesus said that this judgment would result in a figurative separating of people to his right hand and to his left hand, like separating sheep from goats. Jesus calls those at his right hand righteous. However, he calls those separated to his left hand cursed, and he sends them off into everlasting destruction. Since the first two parables involve judgment that takes place before the Great Tribulation, what about this third parable? When does Jesus start to identify the righteous sheep and the cursed goats? Back in 1995, the Watchtower helped us to understand that the final judgment of the sheep and the goats will be decided when Jesus comes in his glory during the Great Tribulation. Does this mean that the judgment process does not start until then? The answer is no. Why can we say this? Well, let's illustrate the point. Think about judgments delivered by a Supreme Court. When the day arrives for a judgment to be announced, does this mean that only then the court starts to consider the evidence at hand? No. By that time, the court has already read briefs, they have prepared and heard oral arguments, and then they considered the legal background to the case. This may take considerable time. No court opinion is considered final until it is delivered in open court or released to the public. What is the point? Well, if the Supreme Courts of human governments take time to hear all the facts and to weigh all the circumstances, should we be surprised that Jesus is wisely using his time now to judge people fairly? By the start of the Great Tribulation, Jesus will know who is goat-like and who is sheep-like. How so? Well, consider this. To a degree, even we can see where people are choosing to stand. True? The Bible foretold that this would be the case in Malachi chapter 3. There we find prophetic words that point ahead to events in the first century and in modern times. Then verse 18 says that we would, quote, see the distinction between a righteous person and a wicked person, between one serving God and one not serving him. If we can see the distinction, then we can be certain that Jesus is far ahead of us. What does Jesus see? Well, we can be sure that He's carefully watching the attitudes, actions, and speech of each person. For example, he sees their response to the good news. Also, Jesus is observing whether individuals support his anointed brothers who will serve with him in the kingdom. At Matthew 25, 35 through 40, Jesus said that his brothers would experience many trials, 
and he explained that those whom he judges as sheep are the ones who assist his brothers. He also said that he views what is done to them as being done to him. While Christ's brothers will undoubtedly face trials during the Great Tribulation, how are they helped now? Doing good to Christ's brothers now includes working along with them as they strive to complete the preaching of the good news of the kingdom. Jesus takes note of this. What else does Jesus observe? At Matthew 12, 36 and 37, Jesus stated that a person's words would also be a basis for how he or she is judged. Let's uh, look at what Jesus said at Matthew 12, 36 and 37. Jesus said, I tell you that men will render an account on judgment day for every unprofitable saying that they speak. For by your words you will be declared righteous, and by your words you will be condemned. So then, does Jesus hear what we say? Yes, he does, including what we have said in preaching the good news. Now, by using the words render an account here, Jesus was referring to what a person has said in the past. That thought is reinforced by the use of the past tense in Matthew chapters 25, uh, 30, in Matthew chapter 25, 34 through 40 for the sheep and 41 through 45 for the goats. For example, in verse 40, Jesus says to the sheep-like ones, to the extent that you did it, past tense, to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. What does this tell us? It tells us that everyone who desires to be viewed as a righteous sheep must build up a good record of support for Christ's brothers now. A person must be sheep-like when entering the Great Tribulation, and they must remain sheep-like to the very end. By the time the Son of Man comes in his glory, it will be far too late to build up such a good record with him. Jesus is like the king mentioned in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 8. There it says, When the king sits on the throne to judge, he sifts out all evil with his eyes. In line with this, we can be certain that Jesus, our heavenly king, is already sifting and taking note of who are goat-like in their attitudes, actions, and speech. For those who continue refusing to serve Jehovah and his kingdom, their judgment will be in place as the great tribulation begins. We can say this because there are no scriptural indications of any conversions to pure worship during the great tribulation. Instead, we read at Revelation 6, 16 and 17, that those who chose not to obey the good news will at that time turn to man-made things to try to save them. They will run to things that they view as mountain-like or strong, such as their political and commercial systems. Revelation 6.16 tells us that they will cry out to such things, saying, Fall over us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. But these human institutions will have no power to save them. What will this mean for such ones? Many goat-like ones will perish early in the Great Tribulation when the governments of this world turn on and destroy false religion. Many more will perish at the hands of other goat-like people. Ezekiel 38.21 prophetically states that every man's sword will be against his own brother. Finally, all remaining goat-like ones will perish by means of the angelic forces at Armageddon. But as for the sheep-like ones, the fine shepherd Jesus will know each one of them before the start of the Great Tribulation, and he will observe their loyalty to Jehovah throughout the Great Tribulation. Then, just before Armageddon begins, Jesus will in effect sit down as judge to make the final distinction between the sheep and the goats out of all people then living. Notably, in this third parable, Jesus said that those who are at that time judged as goats will call him Lord. 
but Jesus will make it clear that they did not support his brothers. So then, any persons who were once sheep-like, but who failed to endure to the end by courageously supporting Christ's brothers, will be placed among the goats. Referring to Jesus as Lord will not save them. It will be too late to do good for Christ's brothers, who will likely be with Jesus in the heavenly kingdom by that time. Of course, the goats will also include those enemies of God who are still alive out of all the nations. This final judging serves an important purpose. What is it? It will leave no doubt in the eyes of all then living as to who Jesus' righteous sheep are as they prepare to enter the new world. So then strive to keep standing among the righteous who will be placed at Jesus' right hand. God's word promises that as long as sheep-like ones remain loyal to him and to his appointed King Jesus, they will be guided into everlasting life. Such ones must display courage by supporting the work of Christ's brothers, both now and during the Great Tribulation. What kind of courage will be needed? Courage like that of Onesiphorus. The Apostle Paul mentions this faithful Christian at 2 Timothy 1, 16 through 18. We invite you to read what he said about him, starting in verse 16. May the Lord grant mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me, and he did not become ashamed of my prison chains. On the contrary, when he was in Rome, he diligently looked for me and found me. May the Lord grant him to find mercy from Jehovah in that day. Onesiphorus would have been an anointed Christian, but his example is one for every Christian to imitate. Just visiting Paul could have cost Onesiphorus his freedom or his life, but that did not stop him from finding Paul and refreshing him, did it? Qualities such as Onesiphorus-like courage will be required of all sheep-like ones during the Great Tribulation. So, in summary, Jesus is now observing the actions, attitudes, and speech of all people. As a thorough judge, he will have identified sheep-like ones and goat-like ones by the start of the Great Tribulation. Then, according to Jesus' parable, just before Armageddon begins, Jesus will pass final judgment on all then living on earth, giving attention to why the righteous sheep are placed at his right hand. Will you be found standing among the righteous? To receive that blessing, don't be swayed by the things you see taking place around you in this world. Don't be swayed by popular protests. Remain neutral, no part of it. Don't be swayed by political promises. Remain neutral, no part of it. Don't be swayed as governments say peace and security. Remain neutral, no part of it. But when it comes to obeying God's laws, stand firmly on the side of the kingdom. Only those who remain no part of the world will be viewed by Jesus as being sheep-like when the Great Tribulation begins and when it wraps up at Armageddon. And only those who continue to support Jesus' brothers will be placed at Jesus' right hand when he makes the final judgment of the righteous sheep and the cursed goats. Show where you desire to stand in all that you say and do right now. And during the time yet remaining, get ready to use our new publication, Enjoy Life Forever, and help many more take a righteous stand before the end comes.